Hello, good morning, and many thanks indeed for joining us on the Morning Prime 6 on the Nose. And I'm glad that uh, you have actually intended to join us this morning. Even as you're preparing to go to work, we're here to inform you. And of course, also with that information, you can transform yourself and uh, make wise decisions even as we're heading towards a general election. Thank you. We have Sokoni coming your way today, which is uh, actually a program that centers on economy. Today is a big day for Kenya Kwanzaa. They're launching their manifesto, and it's all based on the economy, bottom-up economy. We want to see what that particular manifesto will look like today. And I have a full house already here today that will help me slice and dice on what we do expect from the manifesto. Of course, it's not been launched, but we'll do that today, giving you a live wire to wire. Of course, uh, also wall to wall live coverage of that while it happens today. So we want to center our focus on that. And we, there's a big story on the pot that Kenya Kwanzaa is raising some hesitation that the government is trying to sell the ports of this country. And this is what also is headlining our front pages this morning. We shall be discussing this with the panelists. Let me just introduce them. They're already in studio with me. We have the chair of uh, MSA. This is uh, James Mreo. Also, we do have the chair of Central Bank Pension Fund. This is Professor Dominic Mwenja. We have the chair of Kenya School of Government. This is Professor Gituro Wanaina. Also, we have the chair of KEPSA Foundation. This is Engineer Patrick Obath. We ex eagerly expecting also to be joined by Bilo Kero, who is a businessman and politician and former chair of the Finance Committee. So today is a big think tank that I have here who will help me to go through this and a raft of other issues as well. And also, you get to drive the show with me. Hit me on Twitter where or you can hit us also on ktn news ke that is a twitter handle you can hit me also on my twitter handle dibal Ainer at dibal Ainer is a twitter handle and all our socials as well and we'll be able to sample some of your views questions uh, queries and clarifications that you're seeking as far as the economy is concerned but let me just hear from our panelists this morning just give introductory remarks some of them have been missing in action for a while uh beginning with you james Mareo, good to see you good morning Good morning, Duval. Yes. And uh, nice to be back here after a while. Yeah, it's a uh, numbingly cold, 13 degrees centigrade, and it that is, 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 is going to be going is. down and down. <laughs> it's, a big, it's a big phenomenon that's happening, and uh, I think we're going to experience this until August. I'm, I'm telling you. Even yeah, beyond this August. Is, <clears throat> this is the farthest the Earth has ever been uh, uh, from the sun. 152 million light years. Uh, as opposed to the normal 92 yeah, so light years. We're, by, we're about to be seeing the, this swinging <laughs> or I on hope, extremes. I hope this cold does not translate into what we're going through politically, so that we are also going to be in cold for too long. So <laughs> I, hope, <laughs> I hope the heat has generated. <laughs> we hope so. All right, let's hear from uh, Professor Dominic Mwenja. Uh, yes, good morning, uh, Dibao. I, I think it's, it's cold outside. It is indeed. Uh, but the political heat is just... Uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> it's, it's keeping us warm. <laughs> so when the weather gets cold, the heat uh, from politics will uh, we'll keep, keep us warm. <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. So looking forward to the discussions today. Yeah. Prof. Gitura Wanena, good to see you as well. Yes, Fresh I from uh, Addis Ethiopia. Yes. Yeah, the land of the flowers. The you know, that is what uh, Addis... Uh, Addis is new flower. That's what it's, it's a new flower. <laughs> new flower, yeah. Ah, yeah, and the uh, new flower. And, and uh, you can see it on the streets. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed, yeah. Uh, you can see it on yeah. the streets with the new flowers. No, it's, it, it, fantastic. You, you see the uh, the investments in that country. You mm. see their leaders. Like the airport is a it's, it's a job well done. Mm. It, it's amazing how an airline like like that is profitable. You see the kind of planes they have, the places they go in the world, Russia, whatever, mm, 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 mm. Moscow. And, and I think it's a thing to think about. The rail from mm -hmm. uh, Addis Ababa Djibouti, electric. Yeah. You know, those are things to do too. And, and it's interesting. And, and you were there primarily for the infrastructure yeah, conference. Yeah, yes. transport and infrastructure in transport Africa. Transport in Africa. Yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. And uh, if you look at from the, the big team from the US, we said we are the world. Yeah. They never got hungry after that. Mm -hmm. They have been working hard. Mm -hmm. So we think it's doable, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but it's also so so curious. Did, 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 did you really highlight uh, Kenya with the expressway? That's uh, what I was where, where, where do we stand, that where do we stand in Africa? The PPPs, yeah. In the PPPs. Yeah. And uh, this was an example. Mm -hmm. How it could have been learned by NSSF. 
mm. as opposed to going all the way to China to get people to do their own. <laughs> <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, indeed. Yes, yes, indeed. Global. Okay. Yes, and I got an interview, uh -huh. so you're not the only one who interviews me. Were you speaking Amharic? Uh, kind of. Uh, no, they were in English speaking <laughs> space. <laughs> <laughs> so I bet you also you know a bit of uh, a, a bit of uh, Amharic. Yeah, Dena, Dena, uh, Dena Jou? Uh, something like that. Dena, <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let me just greet also Engineer Patrick Obath who is here with us. Good morning. Good to see you. Good morning, Deval. Yeah. And uh, I'm glad to be joining us uh, this morning as well. Uh, what are, 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 are new things that you're finding, especially a big uh, story on the issue of the ports as well? I don't know. I, I you know, it's, it's a big reveal, obviously, for those who have not seen the way ports are run around the world. Mm. Um, if you look at, um, for example, Singapore port, Singapore port is running almost, uh, you know, I don't know, eight, ten ports around the world. Mm -hmm. um, Dubai is also running several ports around the world. And um, Hong Kong is also running a few ports around the world. So, in reality, what people are doing around the world is getting people who have massive experience in running ports. Mm -hmm. They also have money yes. to develop, to continue developing ports. These guys are efficient. They're also linked to various international shipping lines mm -hmm. who believe in their work. Okay. So if you go to a port like Felixstowe in, um, in, in, uh, in, in the UK, yes. that has been run by the Hong Kong people since I was in university in 1973. Mm -hmm. It's been run by an international organization because they're efficient. And so I, I you know, I, I understand, you know, it's, it's a great um, it's, 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 it's a great political thing to put on the table, mm -hmm. but in reality what has happened, um, you go through a process of revelation before you actually begin negotiations. Yes. And um, from what I understand, um, the thing that is happening at the moment is that they are establishing a data room, they are trying to get information available so that they sense whether there is an organization that would be interested in running the logistics in Kenya. Okay. And if it links to if it links to Dubai, it means therefore that you can actually have Kenya becoming a transshipment center. Okay. All right. We, we'll drill deeper into that. Uh, let's just see what the dailies are saying uh, so that we can get also it into perspective and where we're coming from. And we'll begin with a bold paper, which is uh, the standard this morning, which is revealing this. Revealed Uhuru's Dubai port deal. On the spot, it says DP Ruto's Kenya Kwanzaa Alliance exposes an offer to a Dubai firm by the government to develop, expand, and operate components of Mombasa, Lamo, and Kisumu ports, as well as the Naivasha Container Depot, terming it as a clandestine move to hand over strategic national assets. We'll run that your story, or I mean that story for you as well, uh, on what they were saying, especially the, the principle of ANC. That is Musalia Mudavadi. Now here are the details. Inside the attorney's letter to Dubai, DP World FZE offered the right to develop, operate, manage and expand transport logistics services in four Kenyan facilities. Now in March 30th uh, letter, the firm was to submit detailed commercial proposals on one Mombasa support. Redevelopment of BATS 11 to 14 into modern multi purpose terminals. Mombasa Port create a special economic zone to align with development of BATS 11 to 14. Also, Lamu Port operation, development, and management of container terminal. We have Lamu Port again. Development of 500 hectares special economic zone. We have Naiv Naivasha Port develop cold chain logistics park and ICD to service central Kenya cargo transfer to Kisumu. And we have Kisumu Port as well. Develop cold chain and logistics park to serve Western Kenya, Uganda, and Congo. We are not giving away the act, the port, as you say. It is just an expression of interest to partner together to create jobs and opportunity for for the people. This is what uh, the Minister of Treasury, that is Cabinet Secretary, Kuriatani, is saying. Now the ports and focus, as you've seen, is Mombasa, Lamu, Naivasha, and Kisumu. This story is tucked away on page 10 of the Standard this morning. And also you can see an insert here of the letter that's... Uh, Standard also just came across. That is to Sultan Sultan Ahmed bin Sul Sulayem, the chairman of Dubai Ports World 
uh, that is United Arab Emirates uh, that you find is dear chair that is addressed to and the reference is nomination of DP World under the economic and technical cooperation agreement signed between the government of United Arab Emirates and the government of the Republic of Kenya signed on the 1st of March 2022. I refer to a letter reference number LN20 stroke 2022 date dated March the 18th 2022 nominating and appointing DP World FZE or any of its subsidiaries to act on behalf of the government of UAE as its agent who shall obtain the right to undertake the, the development, operation, management and expansion of transport logistic services in the Republic of Kenya on various components. On the basis of the appointment of DP World by the UAE government um, as their sole agent, the government of Kenya formally requests DP World to submit one detailed commercial proposal covering the following. And of course, we've read that for you on the front page of the standard where they're highlighted. You can follow this story on page 10. This also is an issue that we will put into perspective this morning, especially when it comes to negotiating for the country. And we have no sorting idea uh, what some of the agreements are put in there. Sometimes we find ourselves uh, in a rock and hard place to really explain why we are paying substantially for some of these negotiated uh, contracts that we have no sorting idea what are inside. As Kenyans, we have of course the lordly right to know what our country is entering into even if it's a government doing it especially on the contractual agreement in a spirit of transparency and accountability so we shall also tease out this with the panelists this morning ruto and Ryla clash on manual voter register that is the story that you want to follow on page eight now we know ruto is actually warming up to the idea of the digital reg voter register Read the story on page 8 of the standard this morning. Inside the Kenya Kwanzaa Manifesto, as I mentioned earlier, if you're joining us, Kenya Kwanzaa, of course, will be launching the manifesto today, a big day for that. Uh, and our panelists will be looking at the bottom-up economy as it is. Uh, what will be encapsulated in this manifesto? Is it a true reflection of what they have been uh, doing on the ground uh, with the charters, women charter, uh, PW charter? We have also the... The latest one that we had the, the education charter as well and health charter that was re, was actually released or launched recently deputy president william ruto's alliance is today expected to roll out his five pillar and value addition blueprint to solidify the bottom-up economic model that he has promoted for the last two years let me just flip over to page six so that we can look at it together and see what are some of these five pillars that uh, they will be actually uh, predicating their manifesto on I'll just go there quickly so that you can see that this is on page six of uh, the standard. D DP or Ruto's plan to transform sector uh, sectors grow economy. There you have it. Well, it's not really. Let me try and see if we can have it on uh, page seven as well. But this is well detailed for you here on page six of the standard this morning. We shall look at that with our panelists momentarily. All right, let's also just uh, look at what is on the front page of the Daily Nation this morning. And this is what you're waking up to the front page of the Daily Nation this morning. Is it fit to rule? And this is a problem question about Raila's health, who many say is an old coot as it is right now. So the question is, is he fit to rule, right? And uh, they say running mate effect in Mount Kenya, the naming of Miss Karua. And as Mr. Odinga's running mate has bolstered their Azimio campaign, Professor Gitile Naitoli says this election will be won by the running mates. And Karua and Ashagwa know it. So this is the unflappable smile there of Ralo Odinga. And uh, the remaking of Odinga is the sub headline there. The Azimio flag bearer is the most senior politician in this year's general election has not been in doubt but at 77 years he is also the oldest and his opponents have used the age and health card to discredit his candidacy what does tuesday's interview with the five journalists reveal about him his astuteness and metal now mellow and stately how has this firebrand politician changed over the years this story is well covered for you on page 13 of the daily nation i see bows to pressure on manual register independent electoral and boundaries commission allows the use of the manual re register of voters alongside the digital one after meeting with pre presidential candidates in kiambu 
uh, county that is on page four so where is the spine of ibc if they say you're going digital maybe they need to stick with the digital they've been really flip-flopping on these matters as well how mad did kasarani for spent last days uh, last days is what you can follow also as a special report here uh, on the front page of the Daily Nation. Now teachers ration food on high cost. Why your son or daughter could come home thinner this week? A rally in commodity prices has forced teachers and school administrators who are not allowed to raise fees in a bid to keep the cost of education low to start rationing the amount of food they serve their students and pupils while others have received their menus. This story is Oh, this story is on the back page of the Daily Nation this morning. And also we shall be looking at the levies from the government as far as maize flour is concerned. Millers now, they're intimating that that will not really make any discernible difference as far as they're concerned. It's only a two shilling, uh, two shillings uh, savings that they're going to get out of it. But uh, is that the reality on the ground or maybe this was just an hyper... Um, probably from an exaggeration from the government but when you calculate there is nothing as far as the levies uh, is, uh, are concerned that is going to make a difference on your table still that is a question that we need to ask this morning that is this delineation for you maybe I should throw this to a panelist as well uh, or we as we're going with the paper review and I come to you Mreo uh, uh, this morning the issue of age with Ryan Love is if free to rule uh, people have been using that one now as some of the issue at the folder to you know also question <laughs> his presidency's quest. Does it really pass master? We've seen th that happening in Malaysia before at 90. We had Mohammed, yes, uh, who actually went for a one term, then he resigned as well. But people actually recalled him because of what he had done for Malaysia before uh, in terms of running the country. Uh, he had uh, sh sh showcased, you know, prowess in leadership and uh, the economy of that country really grew exponentially. He brought such a substantial difference. Does age matter? Um, Debel, <coughs> I don't think age matters really mm -hmm. because if you look at the leader of the greatest nation in this country and you look at the age uh, in the world, yes. um, you look at uh, Biden's age, really it's not a question of age, it's a question of whether he's able to discharge the duties that go with that office mm -hmm. and as far as i'm concerned i see nothing wrong with his running mm -hmm. i mean yeah, up until he himself says i mean a man is as old as he thinks so if he feels uh, fit to 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 take that office mm -hmm. and has the credentials um, by all means he should give it a <coughs> shot <laughs> i mean we've seen we've seen uh, much older people so for me um, it is constitutional right to, 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 to do so and I have, I have nothing against that I think he's, he's got what it takes question is uh, the responsibility that got with that office and the, 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 the work that it entails whether once he's in the office you know sometimes uh, Debal, hmm. it's easy to to criticize a football team when you're on the touchline and yes. shout how they are doing badly <laughs> until you are told okay get inside there let's see how well you play and then you realize it's all not that it's not all that easy. So for me, I think the taste of the pudding is knitting it. Let him, if he, if he succeeds uh, in marketing himself and he gets into that office, then only time will tell. Only time will tell? Yes. All right. <laughs> Professor uh, <laughs> W. Moinja. Uh, I, I remember Ronald Reagan telling, <coughs> telling one of his opponents, I think it was 1984, mm. uh, where they used, tried to use age against him. Uh, and he told him, I will not use your inexperience against you as long as you don't use <laughs> my age against you. Uh, and uh, this, is, this is a typical example of what we call Monday morning quarterbacks. Uh, Monday morning quarterbacks. Yeah. When, yeah. For, for the American yeah. football. When, when yes. you go in the, in the U.S. American yes. football yes. game, yes. Uh, every morning, Monday. on Monday, yes. Yes. You have these quarterbacks on armchairs and TV stations <laughs> trying to uh, figure out how the quarterback should have played a better game, uh, and he himself cannot play football. Yes, true, so true. the experience of that quarterback cannot be translated uh, into an analyst. Uh, oh, he should have gone this way, should have taken this pass that way, that person should have... But you're not there, you're not a player. Yep. You're not playing. Touchline so players. experience matters. It's not about age. Uh, if you look, Biden is quite old. When Reagan became president, he was also quite old. But experientially, uh, uh, we, uh, he's not running for presidency 
and or he's not been a president before so what are, what experience are we talking about uh, when it comes to the prime if, minister if there's anybody I mean, who is running Raylo. for president mm. in this country and has experience is Raila Odinga uh, Raila has been in and out of government for a very long time mm -hmm. uh, from minister to prime minister leading the opposition uh, he understands government from both sides uh, the others understand government from one side uh, only <laughs> Uh, and therefore, it is incumbent upon us to respect that, that experience. And also, also don't forget the impact that the animes are going to have on this. Uh, Mother Karua is a very strong candidate, uh, even in her own right, even for president. Uh, and so she will be a very good pillar for, for Ayla. Uh, on the other hand, we have the other gentleman from, from Yeri, uh, whose inexperience is, is actually seen in his utterances in public uh, spaces. Then he goes again. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just uh, trying to look at both of them and how, see Correct. how Correct. they complement uh, yeah. the, the, the presidential candidates. And therefore, they have, they, we should be looking at the whole ticket and what does the whole ticket bring uh, to Kenyans? It mm. brings experience. Uh, if someone were to say this uh, about, about age, uh, I would expect that right, I would be saying I will not use uh, a few of the questionable things that I hear against you as long as you don't use age uh, against me. So I, I don't think age matters. I think the experience uh, and the gusto to take uh, decisions that mm -hmm. are good for this country. All right, thank you. All right, let's hear the, <laughs> the right, quarterback, the money quarterback, I'm chair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 as well. he might be on the... <laughs> Uh, muddy, muddy, muddy football. It, it's very interesting. I'd, you couldn't miss that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I think when you look at the position of a head of a state, mm. I think you need to be what does it entail being there? Is it age, is it experience, or whatever the case might be? Uh, to, more, to, to a greater extent, mm -hmm. it's more of a listener. Yes. To a greater extent, is a person who listens and makes decisions and say, to Naida mm -hmm. And that requires a lot of being on the game. Yes. Uh, and, and I think uh, Prof pointed out and uh, Dungu, I, I can't call him Dungu. His real name is Dungu. <laughs> 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 you remember those good days at Outspan? <laughs> uh, and uh, I think he has experience. And, and I think we should not be misunderstood mm. to be campaigning or anything. I think we are far from there. I think yeah, we are beyond that, mm, mm. in my view. But, but, yeah, but for the, someone who has been close to the presidency, we'll say it's William Ruto. So experientially, when we talk about the executive, at, at least he has a slice of the executive. No, but, but there's another part of it that you're, he's a child of two worlds. Mm -hmm. If you look at Ryder, the, the world of opposition and the world being the prime minister then. Mm -hmm. As opposed, okay. read it through to who has been a child of one world. So when you bring this to, and the point here we have to look as Kenyans is what does it mean to be a president? It's not running around. Kibaki never had all this running mm -hmm. around and whatever. But when he sat in, he listened and made decisions. That's what I'm looking for. Age, of course, there's a certain age where somebody, the, the, the energy you have is, is no longer as it used to be. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think at 77, still have opportunity to really push the country forward in the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, I remember one time in the Muse uh, Kenyatta at Uhuru Park, and uh, one of the persons uh, <laughs> 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 said, Muse Umezeka. <laughs> <laughs> I will not finish the narrative. <laughs> <laughs> Engineer, if you may remember as well, uh, uh, when we had uh, Jaramogi himself, and I remember watching him one time on uh, in my younger days uh, when he was uh, about to deliver a speech. And then he went to the podium and he started the speech. Then, he, you know, those uh, cue cards they normally have. And he started the speech. All, all muite. Oh, wrong speech. People were saying, ah, this is the, the senior moments of. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the senior moments of Jaramo <laughs> uh, This is uh, what we're bound to expect also with the, you know, with the old age as well. I don't know. That is on a lighter note. Mm -hmm. But uh, what is your take? Um, my, my take is straightforward. Look at the age of the previous presidents of Kenya mm -hmm. before Kenyatta. Mm -hmm. Uhuru Kenyatta. That is our first president, Mr. Kenyatta, then El Raptor, Teacher Rapmoy, and then Kibaki. They all served at a very ripe age. I mean, that has been par for the course in Kenya. 
Have they faltered mm -hmm. in terms of age? I don't think so. The only thing that you can talk about them is really their, you know, the, 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 the direction they took the country. But whether they failed because of age, I don't think so. Mm -hmm. right? So if somebody is in good health mm -hmm. and they're able to serve as a president and their, you know, their, their faculties are good and everything, I don't think age is a reason. And as the Mure quite quite easy quite quite correctly pointed out, look mm -hmm. at uh, my good friend Mahathir Mahath Mohammed. Yeah, he was having a second bite of the cherry, yes. and he did well, and he, he did he did good with the country and left. And right. he was recalled, by the way. Huh? It is the people who said he should come him. back. Exactly. So, and I think I mean looking at um, I, th I think this whole question has come out as a result of the um, of I think Raila's um, um, performance the other day during the interview. At this point in time. If you look at all the presidential candidates and the kind of, um, you know, the, 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 the kind of work they're doing and running around and doing this kind of stuff, all of them are tired. Mm -hmm. And I think the key thing here is um, in, and this for me is just um, in a way fatherly advice, um, when you appear to the public, whether it is in an interview or whatever it is and so forth, you have to appear when you've got your best foot forward. Mm -hmm. Not in the later part of the day when you've had five six campaigns and you've been chop flying choppers and everything else around the country and then you're coming back to sit mm -hmm. and do an interview i'm always happy to come here in the morning because this is when i show my best foot mm -hmm. yeah if you ask me to come in the evening i have other issues like in the morning i'm really happy to be here because i'm fresh i'm clean and my mind is as sharp as it can be so all i'd say is i mean for somebody who's on you know, the stage of all these presidential candidates please ensure that when you're coming in to appear to the public you don't give us the public an opportunity of looking at you and saying oh yeah we jamana this and that because of you know of the of the rigors of campaign mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. thank you uh, of the rigors of campaign and uh, of course now i i know you're a morning person thank you <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can, 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 can i just put yes. one little yes uh, James. Thing, interjection here you know we seem to all be heralding old age but I think it's also good to appreciate that uh, in the traditional way of doing things in the African setup, uh, there was a way of passing on the baton. Mm -hmm. So I think it's also important for mm -hmm. us to prepare ourselves because the youth are also getting a bit impatient. Eh? Mm -hmm. If we overstay, then we risk also uh, uh, the youth overrunning us. Mm -hmm. So while we appreciate age and experience, I think it's also important to, to read the signs of time and pass on the baton at the right time. Otherwise, if we push ourselves to the end, there will be no experience or a chance for the youth, the mm -hmm. younger leaders, to gain from the older leaders. Mm -hmm. Just like so the guy of Cameroon or yes, those kind you know, of you players, overstay, you know, or overstay. Nigeria. If anything yeah. that yeah. you do in excess, right. if you overstay, then really you risk the, putting the country into jeopardy. Yeah, and we saw also Mugabe uh, with yes, his old age yes, tripping and falling. Yeah. You know, it, it really comes that weakness, and uh, for the presidency, people will always be, you know, walking on eggshells. Ah, will he will he stand on the podium for, for the longest time? <laughs> ah, will he deliver his speech? Will he have uh, some senior moments here that will be such a gaff that will be taken by other, you know, uh, international media? And uh, focusing just on the presidency, and we've seen also this really happening with uh, uh, Biden. Uh, some of the gaffes yes, he's really yes, making. And, yes, you know, yes. the White House has to come and say, "Oh, this is not what." He meant yeah. uh, he went, went off the script a bit, but this yeah. is the, the true position. He's, he's of, fallen of off of high school. Reason. Yeah, I mean he, this also sets some <laughs> yeah. very diplomatic, uh, uh, very uh, very testy <coughs> diplomatic uh, grounds uh, that is just coming from you know the presidency because of some of the statements they do make. But the question also of Raila and his health, we also have to take cognizance of the fact that he was affected by COVID nineteen, yes. mm -hmm. and we do not know for certain if also the the long COVID is still operative in his body or not. You know, that is something that is not in the public domain. Mm. Sometimes it really saps your energy. Uh, it could be one of them that uh, is not really have that vigor, that valve that we saw him having on the podium, hacking back maybe to 2017, 2013, is not really, is, is a pelvic of what he has been. And we can also maybe point figures to COVID-19. A, a lot of people we know who have been affected by COVID-19, they still have this long COVID. Uh, some of them are still, uh, they cannot work out. They're lacking, you know, that particular uh, breath or even the appetite, even the smell. It, it, it affects somehow. So could you also maybe point a finger to, to COVID-19 and his health, if he's really fit as well? And we have the resurgence of COVID-19, briefly. 
I, I think I think Dibal, I, I have sat with Raila like where he is and I'm where I am. Mm. Uh, and after a very long, uh, also this campaign trail is mm. grueling. It's grueling, yes. You are making five, six, seven, eight stops. Uh, you're on top, you're walking, you're mm. doing all these other stuff. At the end of the day, you'll get tired. Uh, and anybody will, uh, regardless, of, regardless of age. Uh, however, COVID-19, uh, I think I had COVID-19 mm -hmm. uh, and I was quite weak until I recovered. Uh, but, but I think he has, he has recovered. But also don't forget that Raila has also had some stints during Moi time. <laughs> that some of the uh, some of the physical uh, issues on, on on torture and all those other things that happened uh, during his time. Sy Syrians, uh, they are still they are still there mm. in the system. Mm -hmm. uh, when somebody knocks your mm. knees and does a whole bunch of things, uh, you, you don't. There are no spare parts for bodies. Mm -hmm. uh, so some of those things uh, do do happen. Uh, and uh, like, like I said, uh, he he is in good health. And uh, when, apart from apart from of course being tired from uh, from because when the, the few times I, you know I've sat with him we are talking and then when he stands up to speak energy just comes right back out uh, because of his experience and his his uh, his a reservoir of history of freedom and 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 uh, and. Uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the fights for the common person in this country. There is no other person who has that than Naila. So he has all this experience from the time of Moy all the way to through Kibaki's time, all the way during Uhuru's time. So the reservoir of knowledge uh, and experience that he has is unmatchable mm. to anybody else in this country. And mm. therefore, uh, anybody his age with this grueling campaign, yes. he will be tired. Mm. Uh, and uh, Ruto can probably also tell you, uh, by the time he's visiting four, five, six uh, rallies, mm. uh, he's also tired as well. So I think it's the mental alertness, uh, the ability to think through, <coughs> and also the points of reference. Was able to reference from the opposition side and from government side, and therefore the issue of compromise, compromises for him, mm -hmm. and to understand and really feel the other person what they are saying, right. it makes a big difference for me as a president. Okay, and uh, I hope he was enjoying his whiskey, was he? Uh, no, we, 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 no, tea. Oh, he was having tea. <laughs> tea. But, but to me, the fact that uh, the fact that he got out of COVID, it means he's it's healthy. Mm. He's healthy. He, you know, there are people who got it, they didn't. Mm. So if you had it and you out of it, mm. then you have, uh, you did have the resilience to it. Mm. But I think it's very important here not to start speculating about health. I, I think it's, I'll be hesitant to get to that direction in the sense that uh, each one of us has their own mm. in terms of health. Mm. And I think when you look at, uh, you look at the position he's in, uh, the kind of health checks he has to go through, if there were issues, mm -hmm. probably would be very clear. M my reading is that uh, he probably uh, is able and then the the position is in even even you know, going for the for the for the highest office in the country. He has a, he has the resilience in terms of the support system in health. Mm -hmm. Thank and you. Therefore, he can get all that. He can get all that. Yeah. Let, 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 I also need to comment very quickly. Uh, let, let's say from Patrick. Okay. Then we'll come back to you. I think we, you wanted to comment. We want to just wind yeah, up. Yeah. Very quick comment. Just add what what uh, Prof just says. I've been in a hospital environment for 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 a while. Indeed. And the absence of sickness is not the presence of health. No. Uh, and therefore, even the other candidate, he could have a sickness that we don't know, but he appears health, uh, healthy on the outside. Uh, and, and therefore, we should not assume uh, that, uh, that because he's, 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 he's 77, he's actually not healthy. Because we don't have the sickness that would, would tell us now, this gentleman, as you get older, dementia starts to come in, and you can see that with the other the older persons. Mm. Uh, Ronald Reagan towards the last the last when he was 80 something 88 i think uh 1988 he was quite old and you can see dementia was already starting to come mm -hmm, in. Mm -hmm, but he was in mid eight, late 80s at that mm -hmm, time mm -hmm. and, and therefore that's what i say the absence of sickness is not the presence of health somebody could not be appearing sick but they are actually not healthy and it could go for anybody including all, all of us here indeed yeah indeed
And, and, and I know when we approach this particular issue of uh, health, uh, it's, it's bound to get murky if we try and look across how healthy people are, especially who are running for this presidency, you'll, you'll be shocked at the end of the day. So I think if, when, when we pick up uh, one issue on one person and uh, other people are not really subjected, maybe also the, we should have a health checkup for all the people who are running for presidency. Right if they really pass master, mm -hmm. uh, all of them, uh, if all of them they check or out all the boxes as it is. Let's wind up with you, uh, uh, Patrick. On this, I can see Bill O'Keefe also is joining us. Maybe we'll just give him also an opportunity to comment on that. Then we gravitate to the issue that <laughs> matters as well this morning. Yeah, I think I had my say. Um, you did. I did. Good. I had my say because I said, in reality, the whole issue of being on the campaign trail and coming back and you're tired, whatever it is, everybody is. Even most of us sitting around this table here. If we've had a full day and you've been running around and whatever, you're by tired. seven o'clock in the evening you get home or you get somewhere and you sit down you'll begin to flag so um i, I think let's let, let's just be real, realistic and say yep um and, and as prof just said you know um the fact that you are not sick that you know the fact that you look okay does not necessarily mean that, that you're not you, that there's nothing ailing you fantastic yeah all right bill okero thank you good to see you um hope you've prayed for us i know you're fresh from the mosque as well <laughs> yeah i uh, hope uh, yeah you've lifted us to you know the good lord uh, this morning but uh, the issue of uh, the daily, or uh, that is on the daily nation, fit for uh, fit to rule, and this is alluding to the health of uh, uh, Right Honorable Ralo Odinga. Uh, does age really matter when it comes to leadership? Many people will say experientially, yes, he's not really wet behind the years. He's got uh, experience be behind his name as well. But looking at it as now a campaign fodder, what would you say briefly? No, I, I think the issue is not about. Um um, age. It's more about health. I mean, there you can be old, but still be fit um, and, 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 and able to rule. But I do remember during the time of um, the former president um, Kibaki, in his first term, um, clearly, you know, he had he had issues uh, health, which um, those who are very close to him who are running the government took advantage of. If you remember, Angulo leasing occurred in the first. Uh, you know, his first in the second year in power, and, and at the time when you know there were concerns about the uh, about his health. Uh, so the, the, um, the issue is, if if you are not um, and health, you know, it, it's, it's not the physical aspect of it. But I think it's when you are not you know available uh, all the time for one reason or the other um, uh, because of a medical uh, issue then you, you the, the, those who are around you and those in government uh, tend to take advantage and and, and so the country um, you know you, you seems to be, you know will be ruled by people who um, will be doing their own have running their own best and this we have seen I mean that, that during that era and I think it's very important uh, and, 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 and the constitution does provide that the person who is running the country must be fit in terms of health. Um, and, and I do remember at that time in parliament, even as an individual member of parliament, raising that issue that it is critical that the president be medically fit and must be examined to, uh, to determine that. Because otherwise you have a situation where the country is, you know, on autopilot and someone, some people are taking advantage and things are getting out of... Uh, so I, I think it's important, this question raised by... Um, it should not just be a political issue, but I think it, 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 it's important that the country uh, knows that the people who are running for presidency and they're handing over power must be seen to be fit and must also be free to declare their own publicly, you know, express their health. You've seen in developed countries people go, uh, president go for medical checkup. Yes. Uh, they publish their, you know, they talk about their health status. Um, but, uh, you know, this is stonewalling about, you know, health status of leaders in Africa. Not even presidents, by the way. Even a member of parliament, sometimes you mm. find even a permanent secretary or a minister. Uh, it's very difficult in this country um, to discuss the health of, of individuals who are, uh, you know, state officers who are, who are running this country. And people tend to think that it is, um, um, it's a taboo to discuss, um, you know, the health. I, I think this is not, this is not right. I think you are... You are, you are running this country, you have a huge responsibility uh, to the people of Kenya, and I think it's important that you share, um, uh, you know, uh, the concerns yeah. about your health with the rest of the country. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and we remember also in uh, 2017 when Hillary Clinton 
she was trying to get into a, a car during that particular campaign frenzy and uh, she sort of really blacked out that was a really really a big issue at the mm -hmm. end of the day they were checking into her health Sh should that be also a checklist by the IBC we are focusing so much and paying much premium on the academics maybe missing mm -hmm. out you can be having all that degrees behind yeah. your name uh, uh, and a state uh, funeral uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think state funeral <laughs> shortly after election. And uh, we're waiting for a state funeral uh, just uh, right after election. There we go again to that, uh, you know, uh, process. Uh, yeah, should that be a big issue? I, I but checklist from the doctors that you have really passed. And uh, this is not from your own private, you know, physician. I, I think it may be not only, by the way, health, but IBC needs to look at much more than health. Mm -hmm. um, you find individuals running for presidency promoting all kinds of uh, things that may be seen mm -hmm. to be detrimental to the health of the society. For example, there is a presidential candidate who openly campaigns for um, uh, you for legalizing marijuana. There are, there are others who are campaigning for um, you know so many other. So I think it's very important for IBC to go beyond just asking for two hundred thousand shillings and some certificates, and 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 go to other ethical issues and and and, and perhaps even. Um, um, you know, medical, um, uh, you know, but medical, you know, there, there's this tendency for medical records of people to seem to be private issue, you know, is, 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 you know, are not being shared. But because we are now sharing um, the status of the bank accounts, uh, people have to know, you know, even when you are being interviewed for a CS, you have to declare your assets and you have to, sh you know, tell Kenyans how much you own. I think it's also important that uh, those issues be raised with presidents particularly because those are the most critical uh, people in terms of not monitoring their wealth and their health. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. All right, let's see. There's a big story on the standard and I just want to also uh, run the story as a segue for our discussion uh, very keenly. We, this is Sokoni uh, where we center our focus on matters economy. And there is a fresh row which is bringing mm -hmm. over a purported agreement to privatize the port of Mombasa, Lamu and Kisumu with the Deputy President William Ruto led Kenya Kwanzaa asking the government to make public the deal that they allege could fleece Kenyans of billions of shillings. The government, on the other hand, through Treasury uh, CS, that is Ukuri Atani, maintains that no such agreement has been entered into and insists that the say deal is a matter of is, is a matter for the next government to decide. So our senior political affairs reporter, Jeff Kirui, has these details. Uh, let's just hear what he has to say about it. Deputy President William Ruto led Kenya Kwanza team now alleges that the ports of Mombasa, Lamu and Kisumu will be surrendered to a Dubai-based company. Uhuru has assented to a ripoff that will see a foreign privately registered entity, Dubai Port World, FZE, take over these key national infrastructural assets. Kenya will cede ownership and control of not only the three ports, but also supporting infrastructure at the ports in the hinterland. But in a quick rejoinder, National Treasury CEO Zukuri Yatani has maintained that the said deal does not exist and that the said letter referenced by the Kenya Kwanza team was part of an economic cooperation agreement. Speaking to KTN News, Yatani says, and I quote, Nothing has been done yet. This is a statement of intent. These are just things we are looking at and we have not conferred any benefit or any authority at the moment. If along the way there is going to be any demand on us that is of no benefit to our country or there is going to be unfair advantage to Dubai port, we are not going to go about it. In a hard-hitting statement directed to President Uru Kenyatta and his handshake partner Azmiola Umoja presidential candidate Raila Odinga, the Kenya Kwanza Brigade says the deal will see development, operations, management and expansion of transport logistics of the port taken over by the private entity. The deal was mooted in a meeting in Mombasa disguised as Raila's birthday party attended by outgoing President Uhuru Kenyatta Raila Odinga and the governor of Mombasa Ali Hassan Joho amongst other state capture agents who are the principal beneficiaries of the deal. It is quite scary because we do not know what other areas of Kenya have been mortgaged. 
We don't know what else belongs to us and belongs to other agents. But the key factor is it is not just mortgaging to other countries to take care of what we have. It is people with their self-interest to make money out of our country. It is a continuation of what we've been saying throughout that people want to maintain the status quo. And that's why President Kenyatta, unlike his predecessor, who were to exit at the end of their term, doesn't want to exit. That's why he's the chairman of Azimio. Now, now, in fact, we, found, we have found out why the president wants to succeed himself. Because of all these uh, state capture and, and state involvement. But see as the attorney remains adamant that any such agreement would have to be put through a rigorous process. See as the attorney says the authority does not lie with the minister or any arm of government. It goes into a very elaborate process where all the necessary and all the personal stakeholders are going to automate the process. The Kenya Kwanzaa Brigade now asking the government to make public the contracts. In the past, the government has ignored calls to reveal contracts entered with private entities, despite President Uru Kenyatta in 2019 during an interview with media stations saying they will be all availed. We as Kenya Kwanzaa have enough lawyers in our closet to go to court and demand this information, and we will do so. That the government ignored demands in the past doesn't mean they'll get away with it this time. Despite the claims, CSE attorney says the agreement creates opportunity for future activation. Jeff, Kirui, KTN News. Now, this has serious allegations. When we know any part of this country can actually be mortgaged without uh, or, uh, the, the consent of the citizenry, uh, then we are bound to ask questions how and what negotiation is going while Kenyans are not really aware of this particular negotiations. Where is the aspect of the public participation? That also is a big question. Uh, we've heard uh, from a reporter that uh, Yukur uh, Yatani intimates that it has to go through rigorous process. So what is the rigorous process uh, that led us to where we are and people now asking very serious questions regarding the ports as it were. And I want just to put this to a panelist and we'll come to you James Mreo. Uh, Hearing those allegations from Kenya Kwanzaa, do they really pass master first of all? Or those also are maybe, you know, catnip issues that they want to politicize right now? Um, thank you, Debal. I think for me, <laughs> this country is in a, in a very difficult situation. Mm -hmm. The timing of the revelation of this information is in itself very um, uh, suspect. Whether or not uh, the Kenya Kwanzaa team knew about this before or not, this is politics time. Unfortunately, they are playing politics in a country that is so volatile, so to speak. Um, the past, in the past, and I lived in Mombasa for many years, there was talk about privatization of the port and a lot of stories went about, there was a lot of hype. It turned out to be not true. Mm -hmm. Um, and this is not the first time we're hearing this. However, now that, now that at, at Kuriatani's level, they, are, they, have, they, they comment if that is again credible. I don't know how credible this is and whether he has something. <coughs> because from reading the newspaper, they say attempts to get his comments were futile, as, as is always the case when there's, there's an issue like this. Um, I think uh, if this situation is true, then there are many missing gaps. For example, you have just mentioned public participation. Mm -hmm. I think these assets, and I, I want to go back to the African tradition, the cow that produces most milk in your home is not the first one you want to sell. It's the one that you want to protect. You want to sell the ones that don't. So having invested so heavily in the Lamu port and the Naivasha dry port, the government then turns around and says, we can't run this institution, mm -hmm. then it, it, it's also very wanting. So for me, public participation has not happened. And secondly, it, there must also be transparency and full disclosure of what is it that we are trading off with. If we are saying, at the moment, the port, all the ports are making 20 shillings, 20, 20 million. But if we let out this to DP World, we'll mm. be making 50 million. And this is how, this is the reasoning behind. It must make economic sense to both ourselves and those who are contracting on our behalf. At the moment, it is all hazard, hazy. I mean, from what we are seeing, most of us are reading this for the first time. Mm. 
Mm. I would expect at my position, uh, and I'm fairly well informed, I should have had wind to what, what was transpiring. So that uh, crowded uh, 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 situation, no, uh, cloudy situation where it's not clear what, what is going on, is what causes suspicion. I suppose there's nothing wrong with privatizing, so long as you follow the lead mechanism and there's a process. Indeed. There are many <coughs> institutions that, mm. that have been privatized, <coughs> but due process has been followed. Whether this has been completed, I think the information we have is very scanty to be able to really make a firm decision about what, what, what exactly is, uh, is, uh, is going on. Mm. But it's politics. Right. It's politic time. It's campaign times. It's time to shoot each other down. So you never know. It could be shooting down. It could be factual. But where there is smoke, there is fire. Where there's smoke, there's fire. <laughs> now, yeah, you know, the Very cloud banks of that smoke, uh, <laughs> it, it, it's yeah, within politics, as you yeah, say. Yeah, how yeah, then do you yeah. become very discreet that this is purely politics and yeah. where is the truth? Maybe if it came during another time, that will have been a, a different mm. kettle of fish altogether. But s since you're talking about smoke as well, they cannot just come out from the left with such allegations which is very serious at the end of the day mm -hmm. uh, because here we're involving also another government yes they are dragging it into this particular story mm -hmm. so uh, the question is in in the spirit of access to information that where we have an act that everyone can access information onto the details of this particular how then did we come to an expression of interest when we do not really know in the first place why the are details. we privatizing uh, this particular ports mm -hmm. So that will be the question, why? Is, is, is there any rhyme or reason why we are privatizing? Or why we are seeking an expression of interest? Uh, I Dubai, know you in government, but uh, at least you yeah. can. <laughs> Dubai, if, if you look at China today, China would not be where it is today had they, do, had they not been for its interest in bringing efficiencies from around the world to the Chinese economy. And if you look at China 30 years ago, uh, and the, the specialists and the, 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 all the experience they brought from people in Europe, from people in the uh, United States, people from all over going back to China, and partnering with those very efficient organizations that run things, China will not be where it is today. And therefore, personally, I don't see anything wrong. We try to bring efficiencies into how we operate some of these very critical assets of this country. Uh, however, Dubai world is in 69 countries. It's, it's not just Kenya, it's all over the place. Uh, from what co my colleague is saying, probably we could have had wind of this going, but this is also the stupid season of politics. Uh, if they had discussed this in March, uh, <laughs> when this was happening, that's political fodder for what, mm -hmm. eight, six, seven, eight months, uh, before, uh, five or six months before the elections. Now, and let me tell you, it doesn't matter during the political season what the opposition is doing or what the government is doing. The opposition that is uh, seeking to succeed the government, whatever they do, if, if President Uhuru today uh, had a vision, which could be true, that Jesus is coming tomorrow, and he says that, uh, and people actually do agree that Jesus will come tomorrow, somebody will come from opposition and say uh, he's lying. Uh, so those things do happen, Dibal. We need efficiencies in this country. Uh, personally, apart from probably the process, the public participation and all that, mm -hmm. uh, which probably during this, this season of, of politics could have just fed uh, into the conversations uh, and probably derailed the whole conversation. So for me, it's about bringing efficiencies within the critical assets of this country. The process of getting there is what we should be discussing. Okay. All right, and that's what we're discussing, the process itself. Yeah, I suppose it's um, next, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 there's something we need to step back and uh, appreciate why you bring the private sector into any aspect of it. And I think there, uh, there are three things, or four, I'll bring in. One, you want to bring experience, I've been it. And that is critical. You also want to bring the technical skills. Yes. You also want to bring, in, as a government or any institution, you want actually to offload risk to them the bottom line you want efficiency and an interesting discussion and this is young man Abdullahi, in uh, he runs the port of djibouti and he said, we are not the biggest port but we are the most efficient mm -hmm. the turnaround time that's mm -hmm. what it's all about and i i can share that the uh, information again the the port of uh, barbera in somaliland mm -hmm. 
right now is being run by DB Wall in terms of refurbishing it, in terms of running it, being the whole. And it's about 400 US in refurbishing it. It's actually being run there. It's, does it, and I think it's point we need to make clear here. In a government which mortgages a country, and let's not misuse the word mortgage. mortgage. We do. And I, it's so sad. It's not worth to be in power. The dual process, I think uh, Murray brought it very strongly, is where, you, and the Constitution provides that, the procurement allows that. Let's get three, four people paid for this. And we go through the, 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 the process. Instead of really saying we need public participation, that process itself of going through makes a lot of uh, sense. The thing we need to be a bit careful here, uh, and when you look at these headlines, it says that uh, Uhuru deal. That's, that's not it. And I think papers we like that, they're for the state. Uh, if you look at the nation, there's a very interesting article in the, in the, in the, in the nation where it says free through. But look at this corner. Cost of living. Very interesting to Mwananchi. Mm. Yeah? Mm -hmm. The tax for gas, cooking gas, is from 16 to 8. But we don't want to emphasize that. Yeah. I yeah. saw that. We don't want to emphasize mm -hmm. that. True. We want to emphasize the, 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 the man beat the dog. I mm -hmm. think uh, good. <laughs> My, my view is that uh, let's get efficiency in the pool because if you look at Ramu, look at uh, Kisumu, look at Mombasa and Naivasha, uh, I don't know why they call it a port anyway, it's a dry it's port. It's a dry port. It's a dry port. port. That's uh, I'm from, like, uh, proof. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from Naivasha, please uh, respect the port. <laughs> You're from Naivasha. It's a dry yes, port. Naivasha dry port. Very important. There is a whole distinction, wet and dry. Yeah. Yes. yes, indeed. Yes. And, 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 uh, yes. Yes. There is no way the, 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 the ship would dock at Naivasha. <laughs> it has been taken out of context. But, but actually, it's, it's a, the SGR terminates at that dry port. And no, the, two, the, 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 the 2A, this was <laughs> from Nairobi to Naivasha was 2A. 2B yes. is from Naivasha yes. to Kisumu. Yes. So yeah. we're just holding our horses and we move. Uh, uh, <laughs> to, 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 to the next level. If, if, if you look at the accounts, and let's talk from facts, and we have seen politics, but it's also important to bring the economics in it. And I hope we can have opportunity to, to look at the manifesto to look like. Yes, yes, yes. Sir. If you look at the books of Kenya Ports Authority in Mombasa, it's not something to talk home about. Mm. The same with our airline KQ, and I can see any other. Uh, public parastatals we have. So, you, and this narrative, this nonsense that people in Mombasa must get more to be, to me is not here or there. Thank you. Because Let's what you are looking for efficiency. efficiency. Can we change that narrative? Mm -hmm. Even if you're looking for efficiency, the process to efficiency has to be very clear. Uh, yes. Yes, yes, it, it has to be very clear. Yes. Let's see from uh, Patrick Obath. I think As I want to bring a couple of things into this equation. Yes, please. The first one is that if you look globally, and I, I just I was doing some, some research as, as we were talking. Yes. Um, look at the companies that operate ports in the world. The, the first one is PSA International, which is Singapore, I talked about earlier. Mm -hmm. 25 ports and owns, not operates, owns 25 ports around the world. Yeah? So it owns some port in countries that are sovereign like Kenya. Mm -hmm. Hutchison Ports, which was the one I was talking about, Singapore. 300 baths spread across 48 ports. They own the baths and they operate them. Dubai ports, 48 ports in 22 countries and processes 10% of the global container traffic. So that gives you a dimension of how the world is in terms of operation of these kind of logistics facilities. But I want to pick one particular one where I actually have experience from the time it was started. And this is Tangier Med in Morocco where the country intentionally decided to award the development of one of the largest in fact this is the largest port in africa to a shipping company mm -hmm. and also was operating uh, ports this is ap moller which is um, a subsidiary of mask which is a shipping a shipping line and it therefore meant they brought in not only the expertise of operating the port but they also brought in the traffic they brought in the cargo to make the port efficient and because they are port operators, their key thing was efficiency and making sure that cargo moves. And they 
were part of a global logistics chain and it therefore meant their skin in the game was to actually make that place efficient and make money and it was a private it was, it was an agreement between the government of morocco and epimola now this is not um is is, is not throwing away you know uh, your, your sovereign assets it is being clever about how you monetize the land and the opportunities that you have in your country and i think the issue of monetizing those things is where we as kenyans have got a small brain and i'm, I'm talking about us in general we always think we have to operate it as kenyans we have to do this we can't get anybody to do it yet somebody like mask which is one of the largest shipping companies in the world if they were given lamu port lamu port would have been completely different from where it is now and so if you look at what is happening in the papers today a big headline uhuru's dubai ports deal and is trying to undermine a process the question we ask is when you want to look at an opportunity for the country when do you go to the public when do you inform people do you say at the beginning we are looking to do something and we now want to go to the world and look for it you'll be crucified the other way of doing it is to go and say fine let us do a quick search like i've just done on um, on google and you find out who are the best people that you can look at and then give them each an nd and say guys give us some proposals let us think through this process so we as a country as a government understand what is required and then from there we then create an rfp for people to come in mm. but at the end of the day i think um the question of public participation and so forth when does public participation start mm. is when? it at the inception stage is it at the rfp stage is it at the point where now you are you you you, you, you are um you know you, you you're close to the end of the deal and I, I think people can throw in any part of the constitution at any point and you're wrong because they have a view and i think that this is again as, as i think the other speaker before me has said this is all around trying to create um you know trying to create a fire in a situation where the country is charged and any negative thing you can find just throw it up right and i, and I, I think you know you've seen them i mean there's been things thrown at uh, kenya kwanza and things thrown at azmio and the bigger the thing you can find to throw at them the better all right uh, let, let, let's just take a short break when we circle back we pick also the brains of uh, bilo Kero. where does the public participation begin because my question is does it make any lick of sense if now you're expressing uh, an interest with uh, you know uh, seeking maybe the, the private sector to actually run this particular port uh, and the end of the day you have a deal sealed then somebody goes also to court because that will be another spawning ground for litigation at the end of the day people say there was no public participation now this deal has been uh, it has to be looked at where were we as Kenyans how did we participate so why then participate or seek pu public participation when you've already sealed the deal? It doesn't make any lick of sense, does it? We'll look at that at uh, the other side of a break. But I want just to pick up a Paul Koske who is raising also a serious question. He is asking, Dibal, uh, why skip the Sakaja story on the Daily Nation? Why skip the Sakaja story on the Daily Nation? And uh, let me just see what the Daily Nation has. Da down there we have Sakaja's story, I tell you. Uh, and this is about his uh, degree driver as well. Uganda is calling for probe into Sakaja papers as another court case haunts also Wavinia. Ugandan authorities want Team University to provide evidence the Nairobi governor Aspira and Sakaja attended their school. Remember, they sought, of course, uh, the views of uh, the Minister of Education, that is uh, uh, Mrs. Museveni, of course, Janet Museveni, to comment on that. And uh, this is the latest development as well. You can read that on page 7 of the Daily Nation this morning. So, the drama still continues. You're watching Sokon here on Morning Prime. Don't go away.